Andy, like other members of the Corvid family, is naturally drawn to shiny stuff. Today, we're helping feed the habit. The on that. John Carrington from Blaza Sporting is here to change the stock on the F-16, talking through a new R8 with two barrel options, plus zero Andy's personalised aim point. Then there are some new UK shoot warehouse decoys to test. All this with the potential of some pigeon shooting and deer stalking at the end of it. That is nice. That is nice. John's come down today. He's bought me a, a few goodies. He's bought me a Blaza R8 with two barrels, a 3006 and a 243, which is quite nice. And he's also bought me a new stock for the F16. The stock I had on there before was a Sporter. It's shooting a tad high for me, so he's bought me the game stock down today. He's just going to stick that on. And uh, then we're going to go out and play, see if we can shoot some pigeons and a few crows. Uh, in between time, we're going to play about with the uh, R8. Uh, we're going to put the aim point on that. And uh, worth a day of playing with new toys today. Andy is going to miss the exceptional wood of the original F16 stock, but if it doesn't fit, there's no point. And the changeover makes an immediate impression. That has made a difference. And it's before I was looking. I was cocked up here. That's, that stock must have a bit of a gimp in it. That's a technical term for cast on, cast off. Considering it's a new gun, it's just unbelievable. Mm. No, I like that. To break in the blazer, Andy breaks out the clays and telehandles handles the Laporte trap into the field. Hi, dude. Oh. It's an interesting target, but Crow is smiling. If he's happy, we're happy. We ask a lot of Andy, chopping and changing test guns, and it's a huge relief when everything slots into place. You wouldn't think it'd make that much difference, but it does, and I've always said it, get the gun fitted. It's like a totally different gun. It fits me really well now. The port have kindly uh, loaned me a trap. I haven't used it till now because I've been too busy. Oh, we have worked hard this summer. It's been a real testing year for us, weather-wise. You get one dry day, you think, oh, I get going to go on the combine tomorrow. You get going, and then you get a shower of rain. So then you're off for two, three days, and it's just been stop, start, stop, start, and it's been a horrible year. It's nice to get off a tractor for a day. With the shotgun sorted, it's now time to put together the Blaser R8. Andy has been wanting one of these for years, but the modular system messes with his mind. You take the scope off, take everything off, put it back on. In my head, you've got to go out and put another two or three bullets through it to zero it in. Yeah. But you're telling me that you don't have to do that. No, it takes a little getting used to. Yeah, um, and imagine. I'd say with anybody that does it, is, is go and play with it. When you zero it in at the range, take it apart, yeah. put it back together and check it. And you'll, it takes a little bit. As I said, it takes a little bit of getting used to. Yeah. But once you're used to it, you just have faith that it does it. When you actually have different barrels, you have a different magazine inset for them. Right. Okay. So all that is, this is the stand, the trigger unit. Uh, yeah, I have a magazine in case. There's a little knob on the back there on some that shows some sun. Yeah. And that's two, four, three. If you then want to change it, a little bit of pressure on the bottom, push it in, and then it pops out. With the two calibers, you've got the 3006 and the 243. Yep. The same bolt head does both. If at a later date you wanted to go with a 223 on it, you can just change the bolt head. Um, basically, change the bolt head, this tiny little lever on the back there. Yep. Pull the lever across and up. Yep, yep. Slight turn, and the bolt head will just come straight out. Change it to the calibre that you're specific on you're after. Yep. Pop it back in. Line the bottom foot up there. Oh, yeah. Slight turn, and slight little bit of lift back it on the bolt. Back. Yeah, yeah. To line the. And it just up and it it straight in. That's it. 243 and 308 tend to be more common than anything else. Scotland like the 270, but some of the Magnum calibers, 300 wind mags, um, seem to be popular. Yeah. With the 243 so, barrel on board, yeah. John clips on the aim point. So, Andy so, attended the Aim Point so, Academy so. with Dom earlier in the year. Um, this H2 is slightly different because it's a personalised one for Andy, as you can see, Andy's name is actually on here. So if you find it lying around, you know whose it is. John used aim points at the Blaza sporting event at Braces of Bristol earlier in the summer, so that makes things a little quicker for us to get up and running. This is it.
Andy is also not used to a straight pull and it's a technique all on its own. But once practiced, it's an efficient way of getting rounds down range. Right, pigeons. Tomorrow, Crow tells us, what remains of this wheat crop is to be turned over for rape. The grain on the ground would have delivered a decent bag in a week or so, but no time for that. Besides, there's another crop attracting the pigeons at this time of year. There's a lot of acorns around. Look at this tree, look. It's only a tiny tree in the middle of a field. It's got loads on it. It's only, boy, look at the size of it. It's only 15 foot tall. Absolutely loaded. We get all this rape in. They'll be on the acorns till mid-December and the rape will be away from them then anyway, so that's the plan. Hey, last time I was pigeon shoot was when I was about 17, when I was doing my gamekeeping, which was um, more years than I care to remember, but about 19 years ago. Whoa. Pressure's on, Crow, to live an amazing hour. Or two. Yeah, well, like I said just a minute, this field, um, they're just starting to find it. All the stubbles around, we've ripped our stubbles up, put in rape in, all the stubbles local, they've, they've pulled them up now and put either rape in or just dissed them up. So just starting to concentrate on the bit of corn that's left where this went flat. So we just have a couple of hours here now and till about six, seven o'clock and pack up and bomb off and see if we can get a, a fallow each tonight. That'd be nice. They'll finish the day off lovely that way. Yeah, these are fresh from uh, UK shoot warehouse. This is our own decoys. Different colours, you've got the dark one, the lighter one. I prefer the one on the on the right hand side, the lighter one of the two. You get it on drilling and and on like stubble in it, they show off a bit better than the darker ones. So, me personally, I'll go for the lighter ones. You ain't been out since I've been using well, these, have you? Probably. The pigeons yeah. are not flooding yeah. in, but there are a few to keep us on our toes. Both John and Crow get some shooting. You want it, David? Yeah. I think we're going to cop it. Then something we have possibly never seen before. Andy in the rain. Oh, 10 minutes, be stopped. As you can probably tell, he doesn't like getting his plumage wet. I think it's the first time I filmed you in the rain. I said to you about 15 minutes ago, David, it's going to rain. You said, no, 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 we're going to be all right. We'll be all right. We call it a day with 20 birds, but there's been a lot of playtime and it won't be long before the R8 is introduced to Andy's fallow problem.